this one. Uh, it says Lang Hao, so it's wolf fur. But it's not a real wolf. Oh, it's okay. weasel. Oh. Yes. Hi, I'm Shuan and welcome to The Library Report, a series where we explore beautiful places, uncover inspiring stories and meet talented individuals from all walks of life. So in this episode, we're here at Library at Orchard to find out about their resident program and how artists in this program use their skills to connect with the community. So tell us about the inception of this program and what it entails. Well, in 2014, when the library at Orchard reopened with a focus on design, we worked a lot with design practitioners and professionals. Um, we realised that there was an opportunity for us to start the resident program as a space takeover of a workshop space that we had in the library. We had partners tell us they wanted to commit to longer periods um, of working with us and we thought this would be a very unique learning experience for our users. Most importantly, we wanted to be able to support local designers and artists and increase their visibility to the public. So the resident program, since it started, we've had about 15 residents so far. They actually cover various disciplines, a very diverse group of artists um, from botanical ink making to print making to inclusive fashion, millinery, textile weaving, rattan weaving. That's fantastic. So, like, why was Library at Orchard the chosen one? Library at Orchard has a focus on design. We believe that design is for everyone. And the resident program is a way for us to not only support the local community and provide a free space for up-and-coming designers to work from, it is also a way to connect with members of the public who may have an interest in design or they already have certain skills or knowledge and they want to deepen those interests. We're currently in the studio of the Artists in Residence at Library at Orchard. I'll be speaking with Elaine, whose work seeks to explore a modern take on Oriental art and calligraphy. Hi Elaine! Hi Shuan. Okay, so tell me about your work. Uh, my work, as you can see, is ancient art form. It's Chinese calligraphy and Chinese brush painting. Mm. So what can people expect when they come into your space during your residency? Um, okay, firstly, I hope they are being transported uh, through time mm -hmm. uh, into a very nice old Chinese-style um, study room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, of course, because we live in the modern times, um, I actually like to incorporate a very modern contemporary twist. Perhaps a little bit of cheekiness into it, okay. so that it's more appealing to the younger generation. We always use the acronym uh, LOL, correct? right? So that means laugh out loud. So uh, I just came out of this idea. I will write in the Chinese words like ha ha ha, and then I will put uh, the acronym below LOL. So that brings um, a new meaning, um, understanding perhaps. So how did you get started with Chinese calligraphy? Um, good question. Um, I started out in a Chinese school, so the standard and expectation for the Chinese language is really high. So my parents were worried that uh, I would drop out of school and fail, because I failed my Chinese, so they enrolled me in a Chinese calligraphy class. Yeah. So what do you love about it? Um, firstly, it's an art form. I, I, I've always had a passion for art and the creative. But I realise over time, as I learn more about it, it's not just about art, it's language, there is history, um, there is character building. So it, it actually encompasses a lot, of, a lot of things in just one art form. How about I tell you about the brushes first? Okay. So, this um, is called Yang Hao. Yang Hao it's a goat's fur, oh. okay, and you can see it's white. Mm -hmm. Then this this one, uh, it says lang hao, so it's wolf fur. But it's not a real wolf, oh, it's okay. weasel. Oh! Yes, so the goat's hair is very soft, mm. um, so there is less resistance. Mm. Whereas for the weasel fur, there is harder, but because of that, there is greater resistance. So it's probably easier to manage. This thing is the ink. 
So oh. it's um, charcoal and then they add wax, that's why it's, it's like one bar. So you put water on yeah. the ink stone and, and you, then you do this more. Yeah, it's called more more. More more? Yeah. It's like you grind the ink. Yes. Now, paper, there are basically three kinds of paper. Mm -hmm. So, uh, shou, shen, and pan shen shou. Shou means process. So, when you drop, let's say, drop, drop the ink the on ink it, right? I... It, it actually stays on top of the paper. I see. It doesn't absorb so fast. Right. On the other hand, this is so called raw paper. Okay. Shen. So, less process, it absorbs the ink very quickly. As you can see, it the ink spreads out very fast. Right. So now, we often use a hybrid of both. We want the thickness, mm. but we also want it to be absorbent. So, pan shen shou. Okay, let's sharpen your brush. Okay, sharpen already, I think right? so. Yes. Okay. So first, we do the tian. Okay. okay. The tip of the brush goes down first. Mm before you hit up, then you put some pressure and then lift the brush up. Down, up, eh? then, then, and then down. maneuver down, pressure and then... Yes, that's right. This is one of those things that it looks like deceptively simple. Because mm. I can really see the amount of control that you're putting and it's really like, it's like painting. We'll also be talking to Natalia, a sari weaving artist who has just ended her residency with Library at Orchard. Her showcase, Tactile Tales, features tapestries created by library patrons during her residency. So actually, what is sari weaving? I've never heard of it. First, let me talk about what weaving is. Weaving is a textile creation process where you interlock vertical and horizontal threads in order to make cloth. So the intention for most conventional weaving would be to create a pattern that repeats throughout an entire length of a fabric. Right. And sari weaving? In sari weaving, things are a lot more free form. There is no pattern and you really just weave from your heart. It's very intuitive, there's no judgement, no instructions and sometimes even no particular end goal in mind. The process is what it's more about. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I can't help but notice this beautiful piece on you. Is it sari weaving? Yep. This is a piece that I made in Japan in 2019. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. All the different textures. How did you get started? How I got started was um, my first ever trip to Japan through a friend's recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to go for an intensive three-day weaving workshop in mm -hmm. rural Osaka. What did you love about it? Mm, I liked being able to express myself very freely mm -hmm. through this medium of textiles and yarn. I had never thought of myself as an art person, mm. per se, because I, well, didn't really have an art background. Um, but. You know, just being at that loom and playing around with yarns and colours and textures made me feel like a kid again. So what was your journey to becoming a sari weaving artist? So after my residency in Japan in 2019, I finally brought a loom home. And you know, I enjoyed the experience and the community aspect of it so much that I decided to share it with other Singaporeans as well. Uh, so one day, um, there was an open call on Instagram for some space uh, for this one day only that you could do anything with anything public facing. Uh, and I decided to take them up on their offer. So I brought my loom out, I brought some yarns and some textiles that I had been playing with and I decided, okay, let's, you know, teach the public how to do it. So this here is a community piece as well, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us more about it, it looks amazing. For this residency, we organised uh, monthly weaving sessions with the community. So these were free to attend, open to members of the public. You just need to sign up with a My Library account in order to save a spot in these weaving sessions. And each of these weaving sessions had a unique theme that had some um, connection with the month in which it was held. The community weaving sessions uh, were opportunities for 
members of the public to come in and weave little tapestries that described a certain story that they had relating to a certain theme. So did you meet the previous artists in residence? So it's not often that a resident gets to meet the, the, um, the projects before them. And so I'm really excited actually to come by and visit the next artist in residence. Yes, because she is here. Shall we go find her? Yes. Okay, let me see where she is. <laughs> so how did the both of you get started with this resident program? The library was organising a series of online seminars about textile arts and crafts and they asked me if I would like to take part in that. And our conversation progressed um, to talking about this residency program as well. And I mentioned to them that I would be interested in co-creating something with the library patrons. And so we decided to work out a series of community weaving sessions for a six month long period so that we could build up a substantial body of work that could be showcased at the end of the residency. Wow, sounds like a really fruitful time. Mm -hmm. So how did you get started with this program? So um, during COVID, I was feeling kind of trapped um, and I was looking for inspiration. So when we slowly opened up, I participated in one of the events at the library it's called Read Aloud. And at the session, I sort of spoke to the librarian to ask if the space is available, if I would like to do a bit of my art. So she actually invited me to send in an application for the residency. And you got it! Yes. So how has this space been helpful for you as an artist? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I must say it has been really conducive. The whole environment, it's very uh, good for contemplation for just letting my mind go wow in imagination as I look out the, the glass windows. Interacting with the community, uh, talking to people, um, I realised that's where I also get some form of idea and inspiration. And Natalia, for yourself? Um, I would say that one of the major benefits of a residency in a public space such as this one uh, would be the visitors who come by your space and who talk to you and connect with you. And uh, as an artist, there's a lot that you've explored in your own, well, in my own body of work, in my field. And it's always nice to share with someone who is just curious. So does this space inspire creativity for you? Um, definitely. As you know, um, the library at Orchard is very much focused on design and art. The books are very easily accessible, design books, art books. So from there, I do get some form of uh, inspiration. Um, of course, to be able to be in a glass studio while I'm being watched, I also get to people watch. And that also gives me some form of ideation. And for you, Natalia? I definitely agree with what Elaine has said. Um, oftentimes when I'm in my studio, I look up and I see you know, people who are studying or reading and just being totally preoccupied with what they're doing. So sometimes I'll make up little narratives about who they might be, uh, like what they're interested in. And these narratives well, can translate themselves into stories that inform my work as well. Okay, so do you have any advice for Elaine? Yes. From the, your time in your residency? <laughs> it is true that you will get a lot of questions about people like how did you get started? People who might be on the verge of starting their own journeys into creativity or really just, you know, something that they've always wanted to do as well. Yeah. Sometimes they come to you or perhaps just a little bit of advice to hear your story so that they too might gain the courage to take that leap and try something unconventional. Uh, and there's another piece of advice I might have, maybe a bit more practical in nature. Um, well, we do our work in a fish tank and uh, some people get really curious about what's happening in the studio and so they might just walk in when you're in the middle of something. Yeah, so my advice would be if you would rather not be interrupted, you can close the door behind you or even leave a little sign outside that says, I'm working on something, don't disturb please. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> Elaine and Natalia have totally inspired my inner artist. Are you feeling inspired as well? If you want to check out Elaine's upcoming studio sessions, you can check out the link in the description box down below. And also, if you are here at Library at Orchard, remember to check out Natalia's Community Art Showcase. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like it, also subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when our next video comes out. Till next time, bye!